Welcome to Biostat Squid. In this video, we will learn how Doublet Finder works. Doublet Finder is an OR package that predicts doublets in single cell or any sequencing data. It is implemented to interface with Sura, so it is one of the most popular tools for doublet detection in single cell or any seq data. I encourage you to read the paper and GitHub pages if you want to find out more, but I will summarize the main points of this tool. So if you're ready, let's dive in. This is a single cell or any seq data set, but some of these cells are fake cells. They are doublets, meaning that during sequencing, two or more cells got trapped in the droplet. So all the transcripts were assigned the same cell ID. So when we look at our gene expression data, we have gene counts belonging to two different cells, which can really confound downstream analysis. That is why it is very important to identify and remove doublets from our data set. A lot of tools have been developed that infer doublets from the expression profiles, such as Doublet Finder. So how does Doublet Finder work? There's basically four main steps. In step one, Doublet Finder generates artificial doublets from existing single cell RNA seq data that has been processed using the SORA analysis pipeline. So it basically combines cells from your data set together to make up these artificial doublets. In step two, it pre-processes the merged real and artificial data. That means normalizing, scaling the data, finding variable, uh, variably expressed genes, which we can then use to compute PCA. PCA basically summarizes all the genes across many cells in a lower dimension by basically grouping genes that change in a similar way across the data set and summarizing this information in PCs or principal components. So cells with similar values of PC1, PC2, and so on, have a very similar profile, with PC1 being the most important um, principal component, followed by PC2, and so on. Doublet Finder uses PCA to find each cell's proportion of artificial K nearest neighbors in a parameter called PANN. So for example, this cell here has 20 nearest neighbors and 10 of them ha are artificial doublets. So its proportion of artificial K nearest neighbors is 10 divided by 20 or 0 0.5. So that is step three. It will compute this value for each of the cells. And finally, step four. As you can imagine, a cell that is co-localizing in the PC space with many artificial doublets is most likely to be a doublet too. So Doublet Finder basically marks cells with the top PAN um, values as doublets. How many? Well, that depends on how many doublets you expect in your data set, which is an argument you need to give Doublet Finder. But wait a minute, obviously the PCA and the proportion of doublets depends on how many doublets you generate at the beginning, right? Well, actually not really. The authors found that the results don't really change with this parameter, PN, or the number of you know, fake doublets you introduce. The default is set to 25%, but if you use Doublet Finder, you can fine tune that if you want. What is actually very important is how you calculate your PCs and how big your neighborhood is to calculate the proportion of artificial nearest neighbors. That is why Doublet Finder has a function called Param Sweep, which basically screens many different values of PK and PN to find the optimal size. Easy. So Doublet Finder basically needs five arguments. Um, the Sura object with your cells, the number of PCs, the number of artificial doublets to generate, with again, the authors say it doesn't really change the results. Then PK, this can be estimated using the parameter sweep function for, for each data set. And then NXP, which is the PANN threshold used to make final doublet singlet predictions. 
Usually we estimate this from the cell loading densities into the sequencer. For example, 10x have a published number of expected multiplets depending on your starting material. Okay, so one more thing. Doublet finder is great to detect heterotypic doublets, so doublets formed by the combination of different cell states or cell types, but it is not so great at identifying homotypic doublets, so doublets formed from transcriptionally similar cell states. The authors propose a way to account for this by correcting the estimated multiplet rate, so check that out as well. So that is all for today. Squid-tastic. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this explanation or if something wasn't really clear. Have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.